Brandon, thank you. All right, bye-bye potholes. Mm. How does that sound? They Unrealistic. Are, they're working <laughs> on a solution in the UK. A tech firm has developed ARIES, which stands for Autonomous Road Repair System. Mm. Okay, so the ARIES I is installed on various vehicles, like, for instance, city buses. Mm -hmm. It has technology to scan roads, detect service problems, identify locations, and then it logs it into this central database. Can you imagine if they showed that map in New Orleans, it'd be all red? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> it would be terrible. The next step is ARIES Prevent. This is a pothole preventing robot you see here. It uses artificial intelligence and an unmanned robotic vehicle to patrol roads day and night mm -hmm. based off that information from the eye. And then it detects small cracks in the road. It seals them. The prototype of the system has successfully completed completed that live trial in the UK. They found it saves money and it's safer than road crews in dangerous conditions yeah, that's, that's too. that's a good one. But this is what we're gonna need in New Orleans. The yeah, firm is do. working on the Aries Ultra and <laughs> it's a machine for more extensive repairs like quote, fully grown potholes, uh, yeah. which is what we have. Do we have anything but a fully grown? No, like I hit one one time at night and I thought I ran over a person. Oh, yeah. I turned around and went back and I was like, oh no, that's just a hole in the road. So when do you think we'll get that technology here? Like 2050? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I love that you were I like, literally I thought, around. I was like, oh my God, did I just hit a person? Oh my well, God. At least you turned around. I, yeah, I tried. didn't want to run. Oh, whatever. Oh my okay. Gosh. Moving on. A trick play during a New Jersey high school baseball game over the weekend. You got to see. Delcy High versus Audubon High, seventh inning. Audubon had runners on first and second with two outs. Okay. They were down a run. Mm -hmm. Delcy pitcher George Starr appeared to pick off the runner at second there. It looked like he had thrown the ball to the out the infielders and they didn't catch it, so it rolled into center field. But he still had the ball. He faked the throw <laughs> and tagged that oh. runner out as he tried to run to third. The runner was stunned, so was everyone else. Oh and this gosh. is how the game ends. We're gonna watch it one more time. Delcy wins this Whoa, one four wait to three. A minute. Look at those infielders selling it. Oh yeah. And then the pitcher comes flying in and tags them out. I'm sure, like, I just I don't even feel like that's fair, though. No, yeah, I love no. when they have surprise plays. It's like the pitcher acts like he throws it and he hasn't thrown it. Yeah, and the, <laughs> the coach was so proud. Oh, yeah. He yeah. was like, oh, they play that to perfection. So, good. yeah. I'm going to go back and watch that again. That was great. I know, because I had to watch it like three I times. Know, I At first, I was so confused. But so the pitcher was the one where the hat came off? His hat came off? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he came running. Wow. I know, he kind of comes running out of frame, so it's confusing. Okay. But those That's infielders cool. who dove for it, oh, that yeah, was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, they had practiced that. As expected, but I apparently like Eric wasn't listening. No, yet. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> we're going to talk about the WNBA draft. Okay. Iowa's Caitlin Clark was drafted number one overall last mm -hmm. night by the Indiana Fever. She wore Prada, guys. The first time Prada has dressed anyone for the NBA oh, or cool. WNBA draft. She looks good. Yeah, she does look good. She looked a little uncomfortable yeah. in it. She kept kind of like tugging mm -hmm. at it, but Angel totally Reese was stunning last night. Yeah, let's see her too. She was dressed by Vogue, wearing Bronx Banco. Banco. I'm not sure. It's mm -hmm. a New York-based. Um, company and she was drafted, of course, by the Chicago Sky seventh overall. Chicago picked up national champ Camila Cardosa too at number three. Mm -hmm. So adding That's a center, be a powerhouse. yeah, and a power forward. Talk about a power duo. Yeah. Under first-year head coach Teresa Weatherspoon, who Kim Mulkey helped coach at Louisiana so Tech. So cool. So many ties. So Mulkey and Weatherspoon know each other very well. Teresa was the Pelicans' assistant coach for several years here, with a very close relationship with Zion Williamson, helping him adjust to the WNBA. So I can't wait to. See what these yeah, three do together. It's gonna but be a it, good it is combo. amazing the the pay difference when when guys are drafted in the NBA and women are drafted oh, in the yeah. WNBA. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's, it's so not fair. Different. You said Angel Reese three hundred thousand for four oh, years. Was that Caitlin? Three hundred thousand something for yeah. No, 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 no. That was uh, uh, Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. Clark yeah. Oh, geez, number one overall. Yeah. Worse, That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the NBA guys make more than that per game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she'll definitely get some endorsements, oh, but a lot of them <laughs> to live have to go overseas. They play yeah. WNBA, then they play and overseas, then they go overseas, and it's like so exhausting, and your body just can't handle yeah. it. Well, I think that's why everybody's so happy about uh, uh, Caitlin because she has put such a focus on women's basketball. Yeah. That may be changing over the next few years. And then Hopefully. overseas, yeah. you think it's scary because then we have the whole Britney Grinder situation, which I know was a whole a little bit separate, but. She yeah. would never run into that if she didn't have to play overseas. I do know NBA makes more money, though. Mm -hmm. I get that. Yeah, yeah. I get there's yeah. optics but there's to it, huge but yeah it's, yeah, it's just sad. All right, you guys remember Lorraine Bobbitt? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Infamously chopped off her husband, John Wayne Bobbitt's genitalia mm -hmm. with a kitchen knife back in 1993. Yeah. That was another one of those, this like, where were you, Mom? This was okay. such a huge okay. switch. <laughs> okay, they were able to reattach it, but now he says he's lost all of his toes due to side effects from an illness, toxic peripheral polynephropathy. 
Yeah. You killed that. that. Wait, that Bobbitt toes too? says, yes, okay. <laughs> Bobbitt says was caused by his stint at the military base Camp Lejeune in North Carolina back when he was a Marine in mm -hmm. the 80s. So at that time, of course, the camp's water supply severely contaminated, led to cancer and other ailments for people exposed. Apparently, he lost all 10 toes and seven surgeries over the course of a decade. Oh my gosh. And he is now blaming his exposure at Camp Lejeune for that horrific night fateful night with his wife as well saying quote I wasn't behaving the way I should have maybe I would have made better decisions if my cognitive functioning wasn't distorted by the chemicals well now oh, you I see those commercials like, talking about himself everywhere you see those commercials we with get the emails I get e yeah we both do <laughs> yeah we you were telling me one day I get emails and I was like really and then that day I started getting them I was like this is so weird stop listening all right that we'll be right back stay right there crazy.